to subscribe. Now today I I am going to answer I think I'm gonna answer just one question. Um, I, 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 I really want to not do very long videos so I'm gonna just answer one of the questions that I was asked after my last video um, the topic on cultural awareness um, I think I've, I had a few people ask me the question because I talked about collective culture versus the individualistic culture Western culture and um, I had a question um, a few people asked me about um, just sharing what I found uh, challenging in my experience and yeah like I said in before I'm more than happy to share my lived experience so um, yeah I will I will tell you um, thank you for raising that question um, it is um, it is it is a question that um, I think a few women have written to me and also you know shared their story about the, those challenges that we face as uh, PNG women coming to Australia and struggling in the first few years or oh, yeah so one of the challenges that I experienced was um, firstly I just want to uh, sort of uh, talk about our collectivistic upbringing as uh, Papua New Guinean children you know child rearing so coming from uh, um, that that upbringing usually we we are trained to be dependent you know dependent we train dependent behaviors and um, which involves you know to to be you know um, obedient and you know calmness and politeness and to you know the values of respect and whatnot that that's it you know they're like um, source of wisdom that we are taught from a very early age uh, as a collective you know family we we have to respect the elders and uh, we are looked after we sent to school uh, there is no doll system so our parents work hard and they raise us and uh, if a parent or is not working then you know the extended family contributes to school fees and things like that so we we are brought up in in that uh, child rearing uh, sort of you know pattern and so it's when we finish school we know that we will work and look after our parents because they've raised us they've paid school fee they've looked after us and you know it's Parents, you know, parents encourage encourage their children to make their own decisions. You know, it's their choice. They they encourage to uh, make their own choices and be independent and such. So uh, uh, it normally just comes down to individual. We we leave school and then we sort of you know want to give back and you know when our uh, parents are old we look after them we care for them uh, we share the responsibility with the uh, amana siblings and extended family so there is no nursing home our uh, elders are uh, looked after in home so in saying that um, the collective culture background a little bit of that we we sort of um, do that and that, that's just our life we we help each other and you know we all share those responsibilities so you can imagine when um, in my experience um, I will share my experience because uh, I remember um, when um, when my ex-husband um, asked for my hand in marriage to uh, my mom and my brothers because uh, dad was 
that had already passed. Um, so uh, I remember telling uh, my family in, in, in my language, don't ever ask for bride price. And um, anyway, so yeah, he, he makes these promises that I, we are, li you know, we get to live in Australia and we will support mom or lady. Uh, we will buy you bags of rice and send money and, you know, such and such. So, um, I remember the time that uh, my late brother said to me after the meeting, he said to me, we were not going to even ask for bride price. Why, why did you say that? Why did you say that to us? Are you sure you want to go ahead with this? And I said to him, I said, you know, we, we have a different culture. Uh, he is white and as far as I, I'm concerned that, um, if he gives you money, that means he bought me. And uh, he said, oh, I didn't think of it that way. And I said, yeah, don't ever ask for a price. Don't ever ask for that. Because then it leaves the door open for me to, um, when I'm away in overseas, I know that I can uh, continue to help uh, send some rice money for mom. And she said, oh, good on you, you know, I didn't even think of it. We were not going to ask for a bride price anyway. I said, oh, I just said it because I didn't, you know, didn't want to feel like also like I was an item. But um, that was funny at the time and we had a good laugh. But anyway, um, when I moved to Australia and um, that experience that, you know, coming here and then next minute, you know, mom needed support and rice money. And then I was told a lot of the times, I didn't marry the whole family. I thought I married just you. Why have I got to look after your whole family? So um, totally understand, you know, I, I, I totally understood where he was coming from because that's not his culture. But for me, I felt divided. I felt heartbroken i felt internally i felt sick to the to the core that i i couldn't do anything without having a visa to you know a permit to work in australia uh, now i was just um, no income no job no whatsoever and uh, just uh, trying to adapt to the culture and uh, I just couldn't understand his culture as well. So that was one of the biggest uh, issues. And and then on the other side, like, you know, you, you have you have family members that uh, were, what is going on? You've gone and you're not in contact anymore. What's happening, you know? Um, so those, that was one of the huge challenges I, I faced. Um, it was really hard. I felt sorry for, you know, wow, you know, what do you do? Um, and one of the other challenges um, that I found at the time, uh, I think when I look back, I wish I stood up. I wish I made my stand, but I didn't. Was stopping my children from speaking their language, my language. We were not allowed to speak our language because when we came to Australia, the children had, because we came from the Highlands, my um, children knew the two official languages, Pidgin and Motu, and the babysitter's language, Tari. <laughs> so they had, they, they knew three languages. So when we, put the kids in school, my eldest daughter, she was always speaking my, my language, you know. And so we had a school meeting and the school said, uh, try and encourage her to speak English. So the encourage to speak English was stopped. Uh, I mean, the, my, the, her language was stopped. Everybody was not allowed to speak my language in the house. And the reason why, you know, I said I should have made a stand 
is that my girls don't know those languages anymore. I try and speak them sometimes. Uh, they hear easy ones, easy, you know, language. But, yeah. And so, you know, I think those were two, two challenges. And even to, as, as, as an adult coming to, you know, live in a different country and you, you got to adapt to the lifestyle here and be stopped to not speak your language. That came down to control. And that's class as domestic violence. You know, the intimidation and control and cohesion. Um, that was quite big. So um, the awareness that I wanna I wanna sort of, you know, encourage other women to to see those and know that they you know, they're signs. Don't ever stop speaking your language. Um, don't stop teaching your children your language, their culture. Um, it's really important that uh, we instill those um, cultural values in them so that, you know, when they're older they, they, and marry, they can teach their own children as well. But, um, this was two, two challenges. There are a few, but for now, I'll, I'll leave it here. Uh, I hope it helps someone. Um, a lot of the women that wrote to me spoke about the same issue. So I hope, you know, uh, you can take some something out of it and maybe uh, talk about them if, you know, if you're having those issues with your husband or uh, your wife. Uh, those are things you can discuss openly and you know, meet in the middle because um, they're important. It's like I said in my last video, it's really important to understand um, someone's culture. Um, white uh, culture is n not just the right culture, you know, not just the, the one that's uh, superior. Uh, uh, it's, it's important to understand and have that balance and um, yeah, it, it, it helps, it helps. Um, so I'll leave it here, but thank you again for listening in today and please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel um, and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye bye.